Hey comic fans, Dave here at Ground Zero. It's Wednesday morning, that means it is time for your weekly look at that stuff. All the new books on the shelves at your neighborhood comic book store, and this week there are a bunch of them. In fact, by the time I got through putting out everything on the shelves, I had two slots left over, only two. It's the biggest week quantity-wise we've had in quite some time. Now, speaking of two, if you'll remember back to my interestingly enough videos from last summer, I talked about how Marvel had done market research in the 80s that determined there were two words that sent comic fans into a frenzy. Now, those words were secret and wars. So, are we getting a new secret wars, you ask? Well, that would be great, but no, these days secret doesn't have quite the same tingly appeal that it used to. These days comic fans expect more out of their books. They want intensity, they want, they want extreme. So, the two words these days are extreme and carnage. Two titles that had to actually inevitably go together. Marvel puts them together for an eight-part mega summer event. It's going to be extreme, I'm sure. Uh, and for speculators out there, be sure and take note, because this book has the first appearance of the Carnage Fish. Yes, the Carnage Fish bears its ugly fin in this book for the first time. And hey, if that's not enough, if you think 11 is just not even doing it anymore and you want your books to go to 12, well, it does that too, because we get the first appearance of the Symbio Shark. The Symbio Shark. It's extreme. It's probably the biggest use of the word extreme since Rob Liefeld invented the word back in the 90s. Either way, Marvel says you will buy this book. Do what Marvel says. Speaking of which, X-Men. New issue of X-Men is on the stands, and it's issue number one. You'll notice there's no legacy numbering here. Is this because they've abandoned the legacy numbering? No. The great thing about legacy numbering is you use it when you want to. In this case, they don't want to. It's issue number one for the 23rd time. X-Men from Marvel. Buy it because they tell you to. Uh, two more books from Marvel I'm going to mention because both of them gave me the giggles for no real apparent reason. Uh, one of which is Avengers because they're starting their own summer crossover event and it is World War She-Hulk. The series nobody really asked for but you're getting it anyway because Marvel says you will buy this book. Uh, one more that I will mention, uh, actually Sinister War. We're getting the prelude to the Sinister War in Amazing Spider-Man. Hey, I'm all for it. If your wars can't be secret, they might as well be sinister. So uh, give Spider-Man some love. Surely we haven't forgotten him. Uh, okay, moving over to DC, somebody we also haven't forgotten, and that is Batman. Batman continues to be pretty much a regular bestseller. Everybody loves Batman. It's the newest issue of James Tinian's run. I'm sure it will debut some new characters. I don't know. I haven't read it because, frankly, I stopped caring a long time ago. Either way, it's in and everybody will buy this book. Enough said. It's Batman. Uh, also, Batman is uh, Zero Point, the final issue of the Batman Fortnite crossover. It comes in a cool poly bag and a really befuddled expression from Harley Quinn. I feel your befuddlement, Harley. Um, either way, it's in. It's a, been a blockbuster. Everybody's going to want this book, and I have copies for the first time. Uh, also, finishing out DC, three books that I, I think bear at least a little mention, uh, one of which is Brian Michael Bendis' run on Justice League. Uh, in this issue, he debuts the, uh, the United. Now, this is going to pave the way for the creation of Legion, which he's currently writing, although it's not currently coming out, it seems like, but either way, he writes it when it does come out. Uh, as I've said before, Brian Michael Bendis stopped getting the love when he moved over to DC. The internet seems to unleash the hounds of hate every time Brian Michael Bendis does something. Either way, I like his work. I think he's actually doing a pretty good job. So if you're actually into reading comics, this is a pretty good place to go. Uh, two more books that I haven't actually had a chance to read this week, but uh, Wonder Girl has been doing really, really well from Joelle Jones. Uh, definitely a, a, a on the rise character, um, as is Green Lantern. Now, she's kind of lagging behind Wonder Woman as far as popularity, but I think it's actually a really good book and a book that if you're not trying, you should be. Uh, either way, new issue of Green Lantern in this week. And that wraps up DC. Let's move to Image where all the cool stuff is happening. Now, Walking Dead fans know the story. Robert Kirkman had an idea. What was he going to do with this idea? He went to Image Comics. Pitched him the idea of this great, great, big zombie epic. And of course, as you would expect, Image Comics was not impressed. They said, come on, zombies, that's all you got? We're Image Comics. We've got a superhero universe. We're bold. We're big. You've got to have something bigger, something more dynamic. And so Robert Kirkman looked at them and said, did I mention the space aliens? Yeah, space aliens. It's going to turn out somewhere later in the series that the whole zombie apocalypse is caused by space aliens from space. Because Robert Kirkman was using a, a literary device used to pitch ideas known as lying. And it apparently worked because Image said, sure, space aliens, we're in. We'll sign it up. We'll do it. Be sure and don't forget the space aliens. 198 issues later, he had forgot the space aliens. But... He didn't forget them forever because now we get Skybound X. Now, this is an anthology series 
it's a it's a short enough series. I think six issues, five or six issues, uh, four stories in each issue. I love anthology series. This actually gives you four really cool different concepts. One of which is Walking Dead with the return of Rick Grimes. It's Rick Grimes 2000. Yeah, I know he died in Walking Dead. But come on, it's a series about zombies. So we get we get not only Rick Grimes, but we get those space aliens that he mentioned in the first case. What more could you possibly want? Now we get Rick Grimes reimagined as a zombie fighting superhero a la Magnus Robot Fighter, except in this case, he fights zombies created by space aliens from space. Come on, guys, you had me at space aliens. Uh, either way, it's here in this one. Uh, and for Walking Dead fans, it also includes the debuting comics of Clementine. She was a really, really popular character from the Walking Dead video game. While well, her first appearance is actually going to be in this book. So um, speculators take note. Uh, either way, I'd like to see anthology series survive and do better than they have. Thank you, Robert Kirkman, for actually giving it a go and for not forgetting those space aliens. It's extreme. Did I mention this book is extreme? It may be more extreme than all the other books. We'll see if it's the most extreme book this week. Uh, also from Image, we get Ordinary Gods, a new one from Kyle Higgins. Now, Kyle Higgins has actually been really popular. Radiant Black has done super, super well. You won't want to miss out on getting on the debut of this one. I did read it last night, and frankly, I don't know what the heck's going on. It's kind of like uh, kind of like Wicked and Divine. There's, there's, there's gods and stuff, and I think it's going to take a few issues before we really know what's going on in this book. But either way, it's got a very cool cover. It's got a cool concept. Probably worth joining for the ride. Uh, a couple books that people are already on for the ride. That is Noctera, a new issue of that is in this week, and Geiger, two books that I've really, really been enjoying, and they've been selling really, really well. Image right now is kind of kind of the, the, the heavy lifter for the comic industry, I think. So uh, two great series that if you haven't been reading, jump on now. It's not too late. All right, two more independents I'm going to mention. Um, first off, Sleigh Bells, mostly because this book is absolutely reprehensible. I read this last night. It is easily the most bloody, horrific, violent book I've ever read starring Santa Claus. Honestly, I, I'm kind of afraid just mentioning this book will garner the attention of Mrs. Betty Bowers because there is more blood and hyperviolence in this book than you would ever expect in a book featuring everybody's jolly Saint Nick. Um, I don't know what to say other than this book is terrible. It is reprehensible. It is ridiculously over the top and I will probably sell out, but it's not because I recommended it. This book is awful. Truly, truly, it is a bad idea. Uh, okay, one more book that I actually did really like. Uh, we didn't order a ton of this book, but I'm gonna order more once I saw it. Frank Cho is an artist that I really, really like, and one thing Frank Cho really, really likes is books and women. The other is dinosaurs, and they're both in here. Lots of cool buxom Amazon women and dinosaurs to fight. What more could you possibly want in a, in a book called Fight Girls? Well, maybe fight dinosaurs. But either way, it also is pretty extreme. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's fun. You think Danger Girl with dinosaurs, and you got this book. And that alone means I'll probably will sell up by the end of the day. But I'm going to get more, because I, I like this. Uh, moving over to trades, well, over at Marvel, we get the Epic Collections. That's their big hefty. Uh, honestly, the Epic Collections were an excellent idea. This is the best thing Marvel has done, because Marvel doesn't seem to do well with four and six issue story arcs. What they do better is long story soap opera things. Either way, the Epic Collection is definitely where they do that. Uh, so we've got a new one from Captain America and a new Wolverine Epic Collection. The one thing Marvel does though, is they don't seem to do a very good job at keeping these in print. So when you see them, buy them because everybody should have these on the shelf if they don't have all the originals. And if they do have all the originals, this is actually still a pretty good way to have them so you can keep your copies mint. Uh, either way, I'm a big fan of the Epic Collections. You should be too and uh, two new ones are in this week. I'm not even gonna mention DC for trades this week because they didn't have any that I really cared about. Uh, however, there were several from Dark Horse and Dark Horse needs our love. So here we are, uh, first off is National Anthem. I have missed being able to say, if you wanna be cool, you wanna read this series. It's been a long time. I didn't realize how long this series was. Look how thick that is. It was a much longer series than I expected. So it's gonna take you some reading to become as cool as you would like to be. But either way, you can do it with this book. National Anthem, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. Gerard Way, by the way. Uh, two more books that I will mention. One is Hellboy, uh, the Hellboy Universe Essentials. If you thought Hellboy sounded really cool, or maybe you saw the movies, but thought, man, there's just so many comics, I'm not sure where to start, or if I really want to read that many, this is perfect. It's some of the most key and important storylines for Hellboy, uh, hence the term, Universe Essentials. Uh, either way, it's in this week. Uh, affordably priced. I'm going to try to keep this in stock as long as I can. Again, Dark Horse needs your love. They do some excellent work that sometimes flies under the radar. Apparently because they don't have Batman. 
Uh, one last one I'm going to talk about. Horror books have done really, really well for us these days. Uh, and an excellent series that maybe has also flown a little under the radar is Cullen Bunn's Harrow County. They have repackaged them now in these big omnibus editions. So if you haven't discovered this series yet, what's stopping you? This really is a book to pick up. If you like the other horror books from, from Lock and Key to you know all the other horror books that have been really popular lately, uh, this actually is a good unsung gem. And it's by Dark Horse. And did I mention Dark Horse Needs Your Love? Uh, and frankly, this one also is pretty extreme. So there we go. Uh, obviously, lots more books this week. It is a big week quantity-wise. Many, many comics to come in and uh, peruse over. Now, Obviously, I've gone over 10 minutes, so no cookie for me today, but that's okay because this was a particularly big week. It was definitely an extreme week. So we're going to leave you as we always do. It's not about having what you want. It's about having space aliens. Either way, stay safe, everybody. Visit your local comic shop and have a great day.